Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Very Reasonable Pilots Podcast. I'm your host, Charles, along with me, as always, my co host, editor, producer, co pilot, gunner, navigator, orator, and podcasting associate, Jacob Gloth. How you doing today, Jacob? That's how I'm going to do the intro from now I on. am. Episode swell. 201. Yeah, that's how he's, we're doing voices now. Uh, should, we, should we be in, in character for the rest of these episodes? <clears throat> can, um, can, can yes. Your, uh, can you do your, your Frederick voice the whole episode? Hi! Hello, everyone. Yeah, I've got a new pitch for you guys. Uh, what, what is it? That's going to make it way harder. Uh. What's your pitch? <laughs> okay. My pitch is called... I'm not doing this. I, um, yeah, I, I, if I did that voice the whole time, I, I would be coughing for the rest of the day. Yeah. Uh, you did your Wolverine voice. I, I don't think that's my Wolverine voice. It's like a couple down. If I was doing the Wolverine voice, I'd be like... Well, I, 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 I guess I could say it's more like the, the Batman. What's the, like, the Christian Bale? <laughs> oh, where is she? Where is he? Where is she? Where is she? Not. What are you talking about, bub? Bub. Ooh. I like bub. We should get your, your bub. Wolverine voice. Uh, I, sh- I should be, next. you know the how they do this superhero scripted uh, podcast? I should oh, be Oh, you're going to be Wolverine in, the, in the, 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 mm-hmm. the Long Dark. That's probably a Wolverine comic, I bet. That's I'm be pretty it. sure that's what it's called, the long actually. Night. The Long Night, that's what it's called. I've heard the ad for it. It's definitely The Long Night. Oh, uh, yeah. I Have you listened to any of those? No. I've listened to the Batman one, the Batman Unburied, uh, with Winston Duke, um, uh, who you recognize from... Black Panther playing Mbaku and various other things. He's great. Oh. He's great in everything he is in. And he wants to play Batman live action. And he did a pretty good Batman voice in the in the audio thing. It was fun. But we're not here to talk about somebody else's audio play. All right. We're here to talk about our television show that you'll hear through the medium of audio and then imagine all, what all the characters look like uh, oh. and like their fun adventures. So my now, show. Now we should today, explain, Charlie. You're, you're, you're. Yeah. This is technically supposed to be my turn, but you're covering for me. I I'm covering. I don't want to be. So he's the hero. I don't want to be that guy. The real hero of, of this podcast. <laughs> I mean, yes, but I'm also I'm very humble. I'm the most humble man you've ever met in your yeah, entire that's life. True, so, I mean, humble, is what I call handsome, him. heroic, Triple H. That's what they call me. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, not Triple to be confused. H, what do, what with do you got the... today? You have something. All right. Spicy is it? Is I it have... exciting. It is a. Uh, it's a. It's a classic. You know. I. I know two hundred one. It's a new opportunity to go crazy, go wild, go stupid, right? But I'm doing just kind of like this is a pretty classic uh, uh, pitch for us, right? This is a a a, 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 t- a road trip adventuring show following a bunch of goofy characters as they make their way through a fantasy, you know, setting, right? I like it. That's yeah, that's a classic. Classic. That's, that's it's the, called the, the, the Wandering Punks. The Wandering Punks. It is. Okay. Yes, the Wandering Punks. It's about a punk rock band from the late 70s that is oh, no. magically transported into a fantasy world and must battle their way through evil wizards, rude orcs, rival bands and mad tyrants to find their way back home right i have a concern oh what what is the concern um i just want to check are these they're not vampires are they they are not vampires this time now maybe one of them actually i i did have one of the episodes is one of our characters being turned into a vampire (laughs) so i don't know um and i I was trying to do something a little different with this show in that, although it is a, uh, it's a, you know, pretty standard monster of the week adventure show, there is a lot of, there's character development in terms of the relationships between these, these four people that are in this band. So I'll introduce you to those people, uh, right now. Also, because they're all in a late seventies punk rock group, they have regular boring people names and then they have their like cool i'm putting cool uh, in quotation marks like Daryl cool like the the black velvet black velvet well is. jeremy death eyes robinson is the guitarist of the band and uh the lead singer amy's boyfriend a rude hot-headed passionate man who is always fighting for his vision 
of the band and how it should be, mm. right? Is and it a good I, vision of the band I, or a bad vision. Well, it it kind of changes throughout the show. His vision of what they should be doing versus shouldn't be doing, and he kind of he's not. I don't want to make anyone the bad guy, right? Uh, but he is kind of the one that he he instigates the most, you know, strife in the group. And because this is kind of a fantasy D and D style universe, um, he has been assigned a class that I think best represents his place in the band, as well as his place in the group. You know, his group dynamic. So he is a ranger, oh, right? Kind of fight up close, fight backgrounds. You know, fight in the back. He's you know he's a little sneaky. He's a little steady. He's kind of a jack of all trades, master of none. Right. Then we have Francis Drunken Bile Todd, who is the drummer and Jeremy's best friend. A laid-back stoner who is more observant than people seem to think, right? So he's kind of a big guy, he's, he's you know, he's a stoner man, He's he's got long hair, he's got like the leather, uh, the denim jacket, right? He's just kind of cool and chill, but you don't want to piss him off. And he pays attention to things, right? He's he's not a talker, really. He's he's more observant. He just sits it back. You know, people think he's an idiot, and he's okay with that because if people think you're an idiot, right, they don't expect anything of you. They don't expect yeah. you to be smart. So yeah. when he does say and do things that are smart, yeah, I know. Me too, brother. Me too. It's great. No, uh, <laughs> but he he's he's got he's got brains on him. He he thinks about things and he understands people. You know, he's kind of the empath of the group and his uh, his um, class is a barbarian, right? Because he's a big, tough, strong dude, right? Okay. Does his, then is it, we does have, he have an axe guitar? Wait, I forgot what he was. He's a drummer, right? He's the he's the drummer. Okay, so he doesn't have an axe guitar. Does he have a... No. A, uh, maybe his drumsticks or... I was I don't thinking... Don't well, I was thinking maybe their instruments magically transform into uh, weapons and can transform back, right? Okay. So the, you know, the lead guitar, he's got a, an axe, right? And then it transforms into a literal axe. The drummer, right? He's got these two uh, drumsticks, and then they transform into these two massive hammers, right? Or, or maces or whatever, like yeah. bludgeoning weapons. It's like he has to uh, stick it into the, the drums, and then it turns into mm -hmm. the Oh, yeah, I like that. They jams it, it's like stabs the sticks into the, like, snare drums and the, t mm -hmm. the whatever. And then he picks them up in their maces, and he's fucking whacking guys in the face, blood and gore everywhere. Yeah. Speaking of gore, our next character, Amy Mistress Gore Kennedy, right? It's the she's lead singer of the band. Uh, I, I, she's not a Kennedy Kennedy, but she, maybe we can make her like distantly related. It would be funny if she was distantly, distantly That'd related be really to the you Kennedys. Said one episode, and someone's like, "Wait, wait, you're a Kennedy?" She's like, "Yeah, my last name's Kennedy, I, but like an actual Kennedy." Like the Kennedy Kennedy, like three initial Kennedy Kennedy. Yeah, maybe. Uh, wait, what? wait, maybe yeah. her middle. Maybe she actually has like a. Like that would be Francis. funny. A, a, a A F K. She's A F K. A F K. A F K. Yeah. Uh, Francis. <laughs> That's a great. Amy Francis, Mistress Gore Kennedy, and she's the lead singer of the band and the most well-adjusted member of the band. Each each member is kind of like weird and a little fucking crazy. But she's kind of got the best head on her shoulders, so she's she doesn't play, uh, she doesn't like placate everyone. She she's kind of the intrepid leader that okay. that gets things done, right? Is she just and a she is dating. She an instrument too? Uh, well, I, I haven't really gotten her playing an instrument as much, and that is also because she is the bard of the group. Ah. So. She's she's leading. She's kind of instructing. She's telling people what to do. She's motivating people. Right. She her voice is her weapon and her instrument. You know, not a charisma. So she, charisma. She's super charismatic, and she is dating Jeremy Death Eyes Robinson. Um, and you know their relationship is very stre like strenuous. You know they like each. They care about each other, but they don't love each other, and they you know. Yeah both have big problems because Jeremy kind of thinks, well, I play the guitar. I, I'm a, I should be in charge. And Amy's like, no, so you're an idiot. And you're a singer sort of relation thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But they're also 
doing it, which is a big part of the show. Everybody's banging other people, you know? Um, and then our final character, kind of the, the, not audience surrogate, but the person who will go through the most growth throughout the show, is Simon Toothmeat Fitzgerald. A loser songwriter and bass player of the group who comes from a broken home and is in love with Amy, right? He, he, oh he really likes her, but she, yeah, she doesn't know or she does know and is like, if I don't reciprocate in any way, it'll, you know, go away, right? And so that's kind of the, the relationship that they have where they both care about each other and they're friends, but, you know, he's like, wants to be more than friends if she's not really interested because of the kind of of his obsession right he's like a weird kind of he's a loser right 100 mm -hmm. he's the biggest loser of the group and she's kind of like dude you need to figure yourself out before i would even consider like us being a thing like you need yeah. to kind of get your shit together first so he's the um, George Harrison. We've got Ringo is yeah. uh, the drummer guy. They're like yeah, um, and then uh, obviously we got the two egos. Uh, the Paul two and, biggest uh, egos John. of the group, Amy and Paul uh, and John. What's the other guy? Uh, Jeremy. Jeremy. There we go. So you made the Beatles. Um, right. yeah, and I have. He is a reserved and quiet. Oftentimes spending. Uh, oftentimes he he's hanging out with Francis. Uh, because Jeremy and Amy are off, uh, sneaking off and, and doing illicit couple activities, you know? Just because, like again, it's just like John and Paul. Uh, but it is, it's, it's the 70s. People are, may, they're, they're banging and doing drugs, you know? So it's whatever. And he's the rogue of the group, you know? So he's the bass player, but his bass guitar goes on his back and he's he's running around behind people. Maybe the ba bass guitar can like transmute into a bow and arrow. He could be that kind of a rogue or he's just got knives. He's running around people, stabbing them in the back. Like a, like a king, king shit right there. King shit a fuck mountain, bro. Um, yeah. So I have a series outline and then I have episode ideas, right? Maybe, maybe, sorry, just on the weapon thing. Maybe a crossbow. Yeah. It's like uses the Ooh, a crossbow. I like that. I like that idea quite a bit, actually. Because maybe it could be a crossbow that's got more than one bolt loaded at a time. It's got however many, I think a bass guitar has four or five strings. So you, you know, it's got four or five shots loaded for each of the, for each of the, uh, strings on a guitar bass guitar that could be cool mm -hmm. super fun we love to see it but it takes like a fucking million years to reload obviously yeah he's sort of used it as like a blunt weapon as well if he needs to mm -hmm. oh he's whacking guys with it if he really needs to but he's again he's he's kind of a quiet guy he's a little bit of a mm, uh you know that sort of thing so i also each uh like all of the fantasy names i've basically just taken like punk bands and and punk musicians and just kind of transform them into like land you know or, or, or like ideas so i have the band gets transported to a fantasy land of iggy iggylandia right and they journey through many lands adventuring solving problems and performing gigs uh all while making plenty of enemies after nearly a, a year of living in this fantasy that land, they finally make it to the to Mount Flagionius, where they meet a wizard who is able to transport them back to their original home. But in the tra in the process of the transportation, they will lose all the memories of the adventures and the character development that they have shared and gone through uh, in this crazy uh, fantasy world. So that's wow. going to be kind of the ending of the show you know spoilers sorry but the last episode is going to be our characters you know it's going to be left up to interpretation if they go back to the world that they once knew or stay yeah, with here. the the things that they've learned about themselves right because maybe uh, all the characters will go through some massive changes and kind of figure like things out about themselves you know yeah in the real world, i mean you know, it, it's, the end of this, it is going to be shown yeah, they're in a better place. They've all, you know, become more uh, friendly with each other, become better aware of themselves, right? 
And so it is going to be shown that they are not, uh, they're not doing super great in the real world, right? Uh, episode one, I have them playing in this, like, shitty little dive bar, and, um, and as they pack up, uh, this mysterious cloaked figure offers them an opportunity, uh, uh as a band, like, basically saying you guys want a gig, and Jeremy, um, agrees to this gig before consulting the rest of the group, uh, Classic who Jeremy. then, after he says that, fucking Jeremy, after he says yes, the rest of the group are kind of like, Jeremy, what the fuck? We need to talk about this stuff. Like, you can't just agree to do stuff. We don't know this guy. He seems kind of shady. You know, all this stuff. And while they're all arguing and Jeremy's kind of getting defensive and Amy's just kind of like sick of his bullshit, Francis is trying to keep the peace and Simon's trying to stay out of everyone's way. The mm, the the cloaked man is doing this, this big spell right around them that they're all so engulfed in their own personal drama that they don't notice that they've been transfor transported into this massive wide field thousands of of miles away from where they were obviously because it's a different fucking universe it looks totally yeah. different right and they think that they've been drugged and that the the guy must have slipped something in their drinks or, or or put something you know in the air right because it's the 70s they're like what the fuck is going on and so they're just like they have the, they take their instruments and they start walking down the road right and they walk and they fight and that's all it is it's just them walking and arguing and walking and arguing because this is what they do all the time and a lot of the arguing is happening between amy and jeremy right the couple um, and after a few years uh, of, of, or a few hours, uh, not few years, hours, that would be a fucking argument. long argument. Uh, after a few hours of walking and fighting and silence and then fighting and then silence and walking some more, you know, all that. They happen upon a man who is being mugged, right? And they decide, you know, even though they're not like huge people, they're not like tough fighters or whatever like that. They're going to help this guy because they're for them. There's two muggers, right? They're going to fight these guys and, and help this dude, right? Because maybe if they help this dude, he'll give them a little bit of money and they can get a train back home or a bus back home. And they, like, start to pick the fight with these dudes and then their, their, their instruments transform in their hands into these weapons. And they're kind of like, what? And out of the woodwork, like, dozens more, uh, or not dozen, maybe half a dozen more men, like, muggers pour out of the, out of the wilderness, and they're like, oh, shit, right? So now it's our four main characters versus, like, eight, you know, muggers, and they're just performing, like, these amazing feasts of violence, and, like, Amy's, like, doing kickflips and kicking the shit out of guys, her words are, like, inspiring, and, like, you can see, like, physical buffs, you know, surrounding her, her fellow bandmates, you know, yeah. Simon sneaking up behind guys, slitting throats, uh, and uh, Francis and Jeremy are just bashing heads in with their weapons, right? It's, it's a fun little, you know, action sequence. And then after they've stopped the muggers and saved the man, um, him being very grateful, uh, of course, uh, asks them their name, and they give the name of their band, which is the Wandering Punks. And, uh, he runs off uh, to he runs off to tell the the story of of this of this incredible adventuring party that saved his life. But before he runs off, he tells them about an abandoned cabin that's just ten minutes down the road. They will find shelter and a bed and firewood there. Right, and so they arrive to the cabin and they're all still kind of like what the fuck is going on here but they're like you know what we're all tired we've been fighting both literally and metaphorically all day let's all just go to sleep um and so they go to bed and that's the end of the first episode they they wake up and they leave the cabin right and they see a sign uh, uh that points them to the small town of brainia right when they arrive at this small town, they uh, they go into a tavern, and Jeremy, being kind of a hot-headed, bit of a jerk, uh, wants a drink. And he goes up and he says, hey, buddy, how much for, for a, a pint of ale? And the bartender, like, not looking at him, cleaning his glasses, like, three copper. 
or whatever and he looks up and he sees them he's like oh, you guys are the wandering punks oh my god and like the whole town kind of comes out to see them because this this man obviously has been telling crazy stories about those they're you know stronger than 10 men and they have mythical weapons and you know uh, uh skills beyond belief and so they all kind of the, the entire band is swarmed uh, by fans, and Jeremy is loving it. He loves the fame, he loves the notoriety, but the rest of them are a bit more kind of like, what the fuck is going on? Because they're kind of like, slowly but surely figuring out they're not in America, they're, made, they're not really even on Earth anymore, like they're somewhere yeah. else. And so everybody else is, uh, He's kind of curious. Uh, but Jeremy, he's just drinking in the adoration, right? And they get a room for the night in exchange for a performance, right? Uh, you know, that's the, the deal that Amy is able to strike with them. And they settle down, uh, you know, in their rooms, and Simon and Francis explore the town. Uh, they find a map and they figure out that they are in no country that you've ever seen on any map ever before and they uh they they're just looking around they ask townsfolk what's going on you know and they eventually come uh hear tell of a legendary wizard vicious of mount Flagionimus, right what, who may be you? able to help them I'm sorry, I gotta know, like, Vichimo, Vichimos, yeah. is this a reference to something? Yes, yeah, they're all references. What is Vichimos? No, uh, uh, Vichimos is, uh, Sid Vicious, right? Sid Vicious, okay. And, and what Flagionimus? is Flagionimus? Uh, Black Flag, Okay. right? The Brainiania is, uh, Bad Brains, these are all punk bands that I liked, and, okay, like, gotcha. continue I'm not, to. I'm not the most punk band literate, so. Yeah. Ig Igilandia is uh, Iggy Pop, oh, I got right? That so it's just, yeah, it's just a fun little silly, fun little thing. No, I, I, I like. So, it. I just, I just I don't, I... yeah, uh, and you know they kind of figure out like we are in, and maybe Simon or Francis are the ones to kind of put together that they are in a straight up D and D fantasy universe. Maybe he's like a big Lord of the Rings guy or something like that. You know, D &D guy. He's a secretly a D and D fan. Wasn't D and D like, like they thought in the seventies that like only devil worshippers played it as well? Yeah, exactly. So maybe so that's he why got the into punk it bands because love he it. thought, yeah, that's why. Like he thought, like, oh, okay, this is like, you know, something punk. And he comes yeah. out as like a huge nerd to everyone else. And like, yeah, just this big fucking dork, and he's got the, the the bottle cap, like the coke bottle glasses and the pocket protector. And they're like, yeah, I I kind of had to to reevaluate the kind of person I was going, the kind of like uh. <laughs> Uh, ca counterculture I was gonna get into. This is not as cool as we thought it was. Yeah. No devil worshipping here. Uh, yeah. So they, they get back and they kind of like they convene and they're like Jeremy is pretty into this. Like he's like, life fucking sucked where we were. In that tiny ass town in the middle of Michigan, right? Town, life fucking sucked. Now we're here, we're fucking heroes, we're rock stars, people love us, you know? Yeah. I've been getting free drinks all night, like, everything's great. Is, jo uh, is, Francis is Jeremy kind of like a, a Johnny Silverhandish character? Is he, like, really brash? Well, Jeremy, ha Jeremy is very brash, but he's got a lot of unprocessed emotions okay. uh, that are tied directly to something we're going to find out about him, and he's going to find out about himself. And once he kind of figures that out, all of his sort of self-loathing and self-hatred kind of dissipates. Um, I'll just, he's gay. That's what we're gonna find out about him, is that he's a gay guy and he and he doesn't know that and he hasn't Damn. like really figured that out, but yeah. And then he's gonna figure that out and it's gonna be, uh, there's gonna be a whole falling out, right? He's going to be under a spell and he's gonna hit her. It's gonna be a whole thing, but we'll what? get back to that. Back to the episode. <laughs> okay. Um, that's a little bit of spice. Uh, so I have the band begins performing at this, uh, tavern, and it does not go well at all. It turns out medieval peasants are not big fans of hardcore punk rock. Or Simon's latest song, Mindfield. 
Which I, I, I think that's a funny name for a song. Especially a punk song. Um, because most of these medieval peasants, I'd even say all of them, don't know what a minefield is. So they kind of aren't really getting the double entendre of mind field, you know? Yeah. Um, and as the performance continues, people begin to leave or kind of go like, oh, okay. Um, uh, and so all, all of our heroes, they're kind of looking at each other and they're seeing it's not going well. But as they're about to give up, a spectral wraith attacks the tavern. And the band picks up their instruments and fights the beast back um de defeating it and killing it and saving all the townsfolk and after they've they've defeated this horrible you know creature they're celebrated by the town and given money and supplies they spend all night celebrating and in the morning hung over as anything they head off for the mountain right so that's that's kind of our Actually, uh, you know how I said that the episode ended when they got to the cabin? Yeah. Uh, that's not true. That's the end of the first episode, oh, right? Oh, cabin was just the act one. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't know why I said that, because I have it written down right here. Episode two starts after they leave for the mountain. Oh, that's um, good. Yeah. The band is spending the night in the wilderness, getting to know this new world. And in the night, they are attacked by vampires. These punk rock band vampires. is attacked by vampires. And Francis is transformed into a vampire. He is a punk rock vampire. And um, in order to save him, they must hunt down the, uh, the head vampire and slay him. Uh, but Jeremy is seemingly less interested in saving... Francis as he should be for his best friend, right? And everybody's kind of taken aback by Jeremy's lack of interest. And it's not like he doesn't care. It's just kind of like we... He doesn't believe in this journey, right? He doesn't think that they should have... They should head to this mountain and get back home. It doesn't seem like the best idea. And so he keeps suggesting, like, let's go back. Let's go back to the town. They'll have a doctor there. They'll know what to do. But Simon, knowing all the D&D stuff, he's like, we need to kill the head vampire, and that, therefore everybody who's been infected with this vampiric plague will be cured, you know? Yeah. Um, I have episode three is kind of where, where we get some more character stuff. Uh, S Simon and Amy go out for a, a drink. They have a fun night together. You know, a, a friend, a friend date, basically. You know, you go out with your friends and you have a drink, but it's just the two of them. 